Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. And tonight we're going to be talking about something that has come up many times in YouTube comments lately in videos I've done, whether they be store hauls or bottle reviews uh, or a top 10 list. A lot of comments I'm getting are about the cost of bourbon and the expensive bottles and why would you spend money on expensive bottles? And it's silly that you spent money on expensive bottles, all that kind of stuff. But before we talk about it, if you end up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let's get into it. Now, many people have a lot of strong opinions about how much is okay to spend on bourbon, how to budget for bourbon, whether you should spend money on bourbon or not. Now, this is this is a Russell's Reserve store pick. This is a, a delicious pick I got from Southern Spirits outside of Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. It's called Ambrosia. It's about nine year old. So it's a nine year old uh, wild turkey, Russell's Reserve, non chill filtered, single barrel, 110 proof. I think I paid right around 60, 65 for this. And as if you're into store picks, if you've been buying store picks uh, much at all, you'll know that that's about reasonable for a store pick. Uh, many times store picks are a little more expensive than the standard bottle. The standard, for example, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, I think might be a little cheaper than this, but it's relatively moderately priced for a well thought of bourbon and hopefully it's a good store pick. And this one is, I know it is because I've had it, it's fantastic. But the point is, is that it's that's a bourbon that is in the price range that most people in the bourbon community, if you're serious about bourbon at any level or serious about whiskey at any level, you're not going to really bat an eye at $60. Now, obviously, that may not be a daily drinker. Maybe that's a little expensive for your daily drinker. If you're drinking on the daily or every couple of days and, and you're drinking a you know, couple, couple of pours, maybe you don't want to go through a $60 bottle that fast. I totally understand. And there are some great bourbon options around $40, a Cooper's Craft 100, uh, Wild Turkey 101 for $22 or whatever you can get that for, a Buffalo Trace if you can get a hold of one of those. Those are fantastic. There's a lot of really good bourbons at $40. There's a lot of really good bourbons at $20. Here on Whiskey Row, I try not to focus on super rare and super hard to find bottles because most of us can't get those. And frankly, I mean, I have some really good stuff and I love my collection, but when I compare it to people on Instagram or other channels on YouTube or other people that I've seen, they have some amazing collections. They spend way more money than I could ever even imagine. But but I love my collection. I'm proud of it. I've worked hard to get a lot of these bottles. I I work, you know, I spent a lot of money and I worked hard for to, to get that money. And then and obviously a lot of these bottles I had to hunt. You know, we all have different price points. We all have different things that are considered acceptable. So in having a YouTube channel, a lot of what I do is, you know, talk about bourbon and some of that bourbon's cheap, some of it's expensive. But when it comes to price, there are some people that have issues paying really a lot of money for bottles. So this is a, what I would call a, a nice, maybe not a daily drinker, but this is a, a nice special occasion drinker. It's, it drinks very, very good. Actually, I'm gonna pour some right now. The reason they call it Ambrosia is because for a, a Russell's Reserve, it's very, very fruity. A little bit of almost an apple, like a fresh sliced green apple, a little bit of vanilla in there mixed in, some creamy, like some whipped cream kind of smell to it. it. Smells really nice. There's a little bit of an orange too, a little bit of a citrus zest. It smells fantastic. I, you know, I love the way it smells. It's very unique, but it's very good. It has a really, really nice caramel and brown sugar sweetness, but it's not too much sweetness, but it's just, it's kind of like, it's perfect. Uh, on the, the that brown sugar and caramel. It's got a nice little bit of a wild turkey spiciness to it. I've had many bourbons that I've paid much, much more for than this that were not as good as this. And and that's representative of many different bottles that I have. Oh wow, now I'm getting this really nice red berry, kind of a dark cherry. You know, if you have like a cherry cordial, like a chocolate covered cherry and the with the syrupy stuff inside, that syrup in there, I'm getting that kind of cherry syrup thing. It's, it's, it's delicious. I've had people ask me about Old Carter. Old Carter is, it's a good bourbon. The only one I've had though is, is batch two that I can remember. And this one's really good. It's 139 proof. So it's very, very proofy. It's one of the highest proof bourbons that I have. And it's 12 year age stated Old Carter. It's Old Carter is a good brand, but they run about $200 a bottle. And many, many people would be like, why would I ever spend $200 on an Old Carter when I could get four bottles of Wild Turkey Rare Breed? It's a fair point. It's a fair question. Maybe it offends you or bothers you that this is $200. It's just bourbon. I mean, it's not like there's gold in this thing. And 
it's good. Is it better than this? I don't know if I'd say it's better. It's a unique experience though. It's so proofy, it's so different. It reminds me of honeysuckle blossoms with like a little pepper. There's a really nice kind of creamy vanilla, almost like the nougat from like a Snickers candy bar or a Milky Way or whatever. It smells, it smells really, really good. Now that proofiness, it comes, it comes off very kind of peppery, spicy. A little bit of an alcohol burn at 139 proof. It's got a pretty good mouthfeel. It's actually not even as thick a mouthfeel as this. And it fades, it fades quicker. It fades quicker than the uh, Russell's Reserve store pick. But under that spice and under that proof, there's this really nice drying aspect. It really kind of dries your mouth. After it pulls that, that, that drying aspect, then it goes to this kind of a nice creaminess, like a vanilla ice cream almost. And it's, it's really good. It's like a spicy vanilla bean ice cream. Is it worth $200? That's truly a subjective question because is it $200 to me? Yes, because it's a very unique experience. I never had an old Carter when I bought one and I wanted to try one. I had the opportunity. It's a well thought of brand. And as much as it's frustrating when I buy a, a really expensive bottle and it's not very good, like I you know, had a video recently where I talked about the some of the biggest dis disappointments I had in 2021. That was still fun. It was enjoyable. I liked talking about that because yeah, I shouldn't have bought some of those. And yes, some of those are you love and I don't. We're all different. This is one of the things that's amazing about all the bourbons around me is they all are different. And they, in a lot of ways, are like living and breathing and constantly changing things. And, and that's what's one of the things I love about the, the art of creating bourbon and the art of having a collection and drinking bourbon and just enjoying it. Is this better than this? If I took price away, right? If I sat here and I, I wiped away $200 versus $65 and the uniqueness of this versus the somewhat commonality of a Russell's Reserve. And yes, this is a special Russell's Reserve store pick, I know, but Russell's Reserves are, you know, single barrels or, you know, you can walk into most liquor stores and find one. So you take away the specialness, you take away the price, you take away the collectability of having an old Carter versus this run of the mill, whatever. This is probably better. If I were to come in on any given night, I would rather drink this than this. Do I regret this? Was this a bad decision? For me, no, because it's what I wanted to spend my money on. It's how I wanted to grow the channel and have something unique like this on the shelves of the speakeasy. One, because it, it's beautiful. You know, it's a, a great looking bottle, the horse and the, the old style, and it's just cool looking, but also the brand. It's an old Carter, right? Is it better than this? No, it's not. And, and I like this. Don't get me wrong. I really do like this. It's good. This is better. Now, I've got another $200 bottle that I have never opened. I've never tried it. This is not the Fourgate that I got recently when I was in Kentucky. This is actually one that I got a while back in Georgia, and I've never opened it. So it's the first, this is the first Fourgate bottle I've ever owned. It's going to be the first one I've ever opened. I paid $200 for this in Georgia. That's pretty good. I like that one. So let's give us a little pour. Uh, this one, for, for reference, this is the uh, Kelvin Collaboration 3. Comes in at 123.7 proof. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in PX Sherry Dash Rum Casks. It's a little bit of a grape. Definitely picking up that sherry note. A little bit of that molasses from the rum. Smells kind of a little dusty. Not a great sign, but not bad. It's very faint. I can live with it. Let's taste it. Well, that's really interesting. That is really spicy. Lots of herbal spicy baking spices all over the place. Getting a little black pepper now. After that spice dies down a little bit, it's really rich and thick. Great mouthfeel. It's a great finish. It's almost kind of a pear. It's got a little bit of brown sugar sweetness. Definitely picking that up. I'm not getting any molasses though, but definitely some brown sugar. Putting these two side by side, I think the four gates better. It comes across more balanced. The uh, the old Carter is good, but but the the four gates better, and that's cool. They're same, you know, about the same price, one ninety nine. I think it was one ninety nine ish. Is it worth two hundred dollars? Completely subjective. From now on, on Whiskey Row, when I say, <laughs> is it worth something? It's it's my opinion based on my unique circumstance, right? Like I have a certain budget that's unique. I have a YouTube channel which is you know not super unique. Lots of people have bourbon channels. 
on YouTube. This four gate's really good. The Kelvin collaboration, uh, three, it's a winner in my book. I definitely would uh, have to give it uh, kudos. Is it better than the Russell's Reserve Ambrosia from Southern Spirits store pick? That's a good competition, though. I'd, I'd like to blind these and try them side by, you know, do a blind and see which one's better. I mean, that's intriguing to me. That's interesting. The point of videos, we all have different budgets. We have different goals that we're trying to do. And if if you're on a more limited budget or, if you know, the thought of spending over $70 on a bottle of bourbon or over $100 on a bottle of bourbon bothers you, like it just doesn't sit well. That's cool. I respect that. Like... That's probably a better financial decision than, than this. You know, I had a collection before the channel and wasn't as big and wasn't as good, but I was, you know, it was earlier in my career. And if I ever stop doing YouTube, I'll probably keep doing this and keep collecting and keep hunting because I love it. It's fun. I really enjoy it. I also enjoy making YouTube content. I like doing podcasts and we've got a podcast now on Whiskey Row for our Patreons that we do about weekly. I like doing blinds. I like tasting new stuff. So spending $200 on this was totally worth it and it's really pretty good. Spending $200 on this was totally worth it and not as good. And spending 65 on this was really worth it and it's as good or very close to this one. I, I'd like to blind them, like I said. But all that said, we have different budgets. We have different goals. We have different things that are okay and not okay. And that's all okay. I appreciate all your feedback. I appreciate your support and paying attention to the channel. And what is too much to spend on bourbon? And it's up to you. What can you afford? What, you know, if you're married and you have a partner, what's okay with you and your partner's budget? It's all up to you. I can't tell you how much is too much. Uh, you have to manage your budget. You have to figure out what's acceptable in, within your family, within your partnership, within your home. Should you save up for a special bottle? Sure. Yeah, save up. Um, is, you know, and see. Maybe you go and save up and buy that $200 four gate or uh, King of Kentucky or Old Carter or a Michter's 10 or whatever. Maybe you regret it. Well, you learned a lesson. Is that a mistake? No. You do something that you learn from. I don't think it's a mistake. It's an opportunity to do better, be smarter, and make better decisions. Enough of my soapbox. I'm done. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.